So we go to kind of our next question, which is what can the UK do to reduce dependency on the EU? And that's a difficult one because, you know, we are very dependent on the um, the EU for um, goods, services and also um, just getting in, you know, workers. You know, I don't want to be one of those people who, you know, says that, oh, you know, when certain uh, people from certain countries in the EU come here, you know, and we just call them, you know, migrants or, you know, just seasonal workers, etc. You know, they, they come here to do a job and it's a job which, you know, certain people in this country don't want to do. And, you know, things like fruit and vegetable picking is very difficult. Looking after old people is very difficult. But obviously with the rise of, you know, things like visas um, and kind of, we don't know in kind of which direction the UK is going to fully go in with regards to, um, you know, who will be allowed into the country um, under special circumstances. Um, you know, so I ask you the question, Georgia, what can the UK, especially with import checks, sorry, um, as well coming in, what can the UK do to reduce dependency on the EU? In a way, they can, um, because we spoke about the import export of um, meats fishing um, and beef for example they can put some sort of quotas or some sort of tariffs you know because for example salmon is something that just uk does i don't think we can do that because we, we signed the tca you know the free trade yeah. agreement so i don't think yeah. we could actually do tariffs and quotas i think what the the uk could do is something like uh, maybe subsidize and you know sort yes. of incentivize that farms is my next point oh, okay yeah you go for that it. is my next point so that is one the first one fishing for future you know if there will be any changes just in case any changes to tca will be made they can be one second as you mentioned is subsidize so uk uh, wants to go out of this common agreement policy which is within the european union under this law or under this agreement uh, they allocate around four billion euros to to be paid to the farmers but because they are outside or because like there is no european union brexit anymore. means brexit yeah yeah that's yes. what i'm trying to say yeah <laughs> they're they're trying to make a new agreement or agricultural act i think yeah. they were talking about it's this a, last year it's a new kind of subsidy. subsidies yes to create subsidies and I think that would be not just four billion, but it would depend by demand. It would depend on by the climate climate that the farmers had that year. So different farmers with different conditions will get an amount that would um, benefit them, and the government is looking to make it like that. So the products of UK would be, let's say, more uh, more affordable for UK and for the external market and also this would create higher competition for the European Union on the global market if you think. So you're talking about more socialism where the UK is going to look at yeah, that's what they say there's a more socialism you know you're looking at talking about subsidies to farmers which um the, th the thing is the big issues i have with this subsidy is that one it's going to be towards more green um production of farming which is not a bad thing so long as the farmers can actually get the money and it's worth it for them you know there's no point in saying you need to you know set up a windmill on your farm you know one of those giant windmills um and we'll give you x amount like the farm's gonna be like bruv like come on man so, you know, as long as you don't see stupid stuff like that, the money is actually good. Um, that would be a key thing as well. Um, can't remember the second point I was going to make. But, you know, with, with these... Oh, sorry, I remember now. The Conservative government don't believe in things like subsidies. They believe in sink or swim. You know, that's what Thatcher's big idea was, you know. Same with Reagan. So how much do you think the UK are actually going to do these sorts of subsidies when what the UK could do is try and lower certain standards within, you know, vegetables and... Um, you know within farming to import you know products from around the world instead of uh sticking you know with subsidizing our british farmers we can just import cheaper stuff from elsewhere if that made sense but um i mean i don't i don't know what the new rule for agriculture will involve one good thing i don't know how followed it was but for european union uh, the genetically modified GMOs, uh, yeah. foods have been banned so you know you are not able to eat that while in other countries for example in northern america it is allowed so of course uk can adopt something like that gmos but 
they will not have a positive impact on population. Look at, uh, I don't want to say anything bad about USA. It's a great country, but oh, it has the you. highest obesity in the world. Well, we have freedom of speech here. You know, you can, you can say mean things about America if you want. <laughs> Trump's not there anymore. He's not going to sanction you. No, it's, uh, Joe, it's Joe Biden. You know, he, he's a slightly nicer human being. Um, you can say some mean things if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. And he's more socialist, if you think a bit, Not a bit massively. more so. Not yes, yes. It's a, it's a, it's a very big scale. We're going very far. You know, sort of seven out of ten against. And then again, you know, Trump did do some subsidies of farms, so they are very confusing when it comes to trying to put them into a specific, um, say what they specifically are, because they're a bit of everything when it suits them. But yeah, you know, with America, like you were saying, if I interrupted you very stupidly again, um, GMOs and some of the stuff the Americans eat are very dodgy. You know, their chickens, I think they're way bigger than ours because they, uh, you know, f force feed them and give them a load of chemicals to make them bigger, which is terrifying. Like I saw pictures, I think they did it during World War II where the chickens grew massively in size and they looked terrifying. God. But like, you see, that's what I mean. In a way, if you import things cheaper, much cheaper, you don't know the quality and how it mm. will actually affect long term the well being of your country. Also, the I'm fact personally that for locally produced, locally grown up. That sounds things. very Brexit y and a bit nationalistically. No, no. <laughs> in, if you want to be alone, like, okay, I said I want to be great again, let me show that I can do it to the world, you know. Then just show. Do it. <laughs> we don't do that in this country. We just talk about it and pretend we're doing it and then we don't do it. And they're like, yo, why are the EU being so mean to us? It's not our fault. Um, so, yeah, anyways, we'll go back to the, the point of the question, which is what can the UK do uh, to reduce dependency on the EU? And we spoke previously about um, because certain jobs, like we've said, you know, people in the UK just don't want to do. So you talked about, you know, getting in uh, people to do certain jobs from the Balkan countries, right? Maybe uh, there was the so the UK is looking out to not extend but to open up some of their schemes like uh, youth mobility scheme and seasonal worker pilot to make this visas available um, for a bit longer time with lower conditions to some seasonal workers. So more foreigners. Uh, yes, but not just European Union. So different in a way, foreigners, it's... brown foreigners. <laughs> It's opening up uh, for more people, and I think they want to open around 30,000 of these okay. visas. So, so it's pretty, uh, it's a big number, to be honest, so for a season. Apart from, um, you know, offering farmers and fishermen subsidies so they keep more of their UK products here and sort of say that, look, we'll pay you a certain amount of money. So the mm -hmm. amount that, you know, people in the EU would have paid is covered, if that makes sense. So say, you know, um, a piece of salmon, you know, people in France paid five pounds and people in the UK will only pay four pounds. We'll cover that amount, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So aside from subsidies um, and sort of... Um, getting in EU work, uh, getting in sort of non-EU sk uh, skilled staff in um, areas the UK you know doesn't have the uh, staff in the workers in what else can the UK do for example I looked at the infrastructure as well where to get the money for infrastructure uh, Rishi Sunak was mentioning Dishi that Rishi huh? that's his name on the channel Dishi Rishi because someone gave him that nickname. So I, okay. I give him the name Dishy Rishi. It's something like uh, Lord Frost. I call him Lord David the Iceman Frost because um, I found it funny. And Dishy Rishi as well because of the uh, Eat Out to Help Out scheme. So. Okay. This person <laughs> said that they would like to kind of invest around 12 billion, I think, to create a, a proper, not proper, UK owned infrastructural bank, which is pretty much equivalent to EIB of Europe. Okay. Uh, and create projects that would attract more and more external investment, potentially from China and um, uh, USA, where big companies would implement or will invest their money to better the conditions of infrastructure in, in United Kingdom. Um, saying that it would really be a good uh, plan because you know uh, it means that uk will not wait for the money to be allocated by the european union they can in implement the money the way they want but there is just one big thing um i'd like to highlight that all the construction materials in uk 
around 60%, I think, are actually imported from EU. So that would be a big question which, uh, which I'm still looking for, where UK will get that um. materials from. Because it, it's, if you think outside European Union, there is China, yes, very good in producing construction goods. There is Northern American continent, but transportation costs would be just yeah, terrifying. Very high. Very, yeah. very high. Um, I did see in the UK recently, I think there's Liberty Steel, I think it's called, um, is struggling. And it's one of these big steel manufacturers in the UK. They are struggling and they're looking at bankruptcy. So um, in the past, we saw, I think, something similar with Tata Steel. So, you know, it's definitely not going to come from the UK. And it looks like we might even have less um, construction within um, sort of construction materials made within the UK. Um, also, we're still relying on getting the raw materials anyways. So good luck with that, Rishi. Also, um, what's in it for China if they invest in the um, this investment bank idea? What, what do they get out of it? No, they would invest. I think the bank itself would attract investment from um, from China. So what it means that the Ch that Chinese company would probably have a stake mm -hmm. in the new road and all the um, profit that would come from that particular road, um, a percentage, a, a certain percentage would go to the companies that invested but in it. The, the thing is, a road can only make profit if you have like a toll or something like that. So how would that work? Probably that's how it will work. A toll. All right. Um, is that how the European um, investment, the infrastructure bank makes money as well? Or is, there, is that a no, separate thing? No, this is thing? taxpayers. The European uh, um, Infrastructure Bank w works from um, taxpayers' money. So this money are allocated to different countries. People, like, the country does not have to pay it back mm. because this is taxpayers' money. Ha, what a bunch of fools, you know. Imagine using taxpayers' money to do infrastructure, pay, um, in infrastructure projects to benefit taxpayers where you can get rich people just to invest in it and then put tolls on those roads and then they make even more money back. You know, a bunch of fools over there. You know, there are pretty many tolls in some European countries. Yeah. Not all of them, but there are some countries like people hate tolls. tolls in this country. I hate tolls um, as well. So, yeah, I've go on. experienced just two of them: M25, I think, and M6. Yeah, it's just for shortcuts. Um, really, my dad explained to me a long time ago. He said, if it's really busy, if you take the toll road, you can save time. But if it's not very busy, you're best off sticking on the motorway because you're just wasting money, and um, the toll road isn't actually that much faster if there's um, little traffic. Uh, he explained to me this like a good four or five years ago. So, um, yeah, so when it comes to reducing dependency on the EU, there isn't a lot the UK can do, right? Not at the moment. They would definitely, you know, need to retrain their people to create or to concentrate on an industry that would make it uh, outstanding. You know, it would be mm -hmm. the USP unique selling point for of UK. For the rest of the can we globe. sell xenophobia or cynicism or just become a closed uh, country you know <laughs> self-production and consumption welcome to the, the uk where we sell cynicism and lies good lies the best lies don't you believe me 